Okay, we're talking to Kyle Franklin, air show performer, and um, the latest in a long line of air show performers in your family, right, Kyle? Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to be here. You're here at Oshkosh 18. It's a great show. The weather's been wonderful. Uh, how much are you going to be performing here this year? Well, actually, uh, I flew Monday in the Kit Fox Speedster, and then I flew yesterday in Dracula, and then the rest of this week I'm doing other things right now, and then I fly again Sunday. Working on maybe getting, my, getting in Thursday if I can, but the schedule out here is always really tight because they have so many great performers here and everything. Oh, yeah, trying. Yeah, yeah. So we're all we're all fighting to try to get our get extra spots and get our get in there. But uh, but yeah, so it's really it's always busy here and it's a uh, but it, well, nothing have, like Oshkosh. How many generations of your family have flown here? Well, well, say generation is primarily my father and I. Yeah. The, the air show part uh, started with my father, but uh, I'm actually third generation pilot. Uh, started with my grandfather. Okay. And uh, my my family was actually uh, my gra grandfather was a farmer and a rancher, and the farm and the ranch were 30 miles apart. And uh, he was the first one to get into airplanes, and he used an airplane like most people do a pickup truck, and he'd use that to fly back and forth 30 miles between the farm and the ranch. And then when my dad came along, that's how my father started learning to fly. Was sitting on his lap going back and forth from the farm and the ranch. So my dad started learning, you know, technically while he was still in diapers, and. Uh, then uh, you know, air, airplanes were just another piece of farm equipment, and by the time my dad was eight years old, he pretty much knew how to fly the airplane. When he was 12 years old, he was home alone, got bored, and snuck out and soloed himself. And uh, that actually just ended up giving him another chore, because then he'd get home, get off the school bus, and they load the family PA-14 family cruiser up with a uh, feed hopper and, uh, and uh, cattle cubes in the back. And he'd fly the 30 miles over the ranch and feed the cattle from the air. Yeah, just drop the cubes out. And but the uh, only bad thing about that is, anytime any airplane fly over the ranch, the cattle would start chasing the uh, chasing the airplanes. But that's how my father started to uh, build time in airplanes. Uh, that same year, he went to his first air show and saw Harold Cryer and Charlie Hillard perform. Cryer, wow. Yeah, I saw them perform. Chipmunk. Yeah, and those were, those were his heroes. And he decided right then that he wanted to be an air show pilot. And then jump ahead a couple of years at. Uh, at uh, age 19, he started performing at air shows in a, walk, a stock Waka UPF-7, and that airplane, over the years, over the, his next 38 years, eventually is what morphed into the original Jet Waka. And uh, so that's kind of how that, you know, that part of my family stuff got started with the air show business and flying. And of course, I just naturally grew up in the air show business. I grew up doing this. I was kind of the same way. I went for my first airplane ride when I was four weeks old. And uh, started learning to fly very young. I started traveling with my father every summer after school uh, on, the, on the air show circuit when I was 12. So I just naturally grew up in this. And then when I was uh, 17, I started wing walking on the outside of the airplane for him professionally. And did that for eight years. And then in about halfway through that, I started flying my comedy routine, which I'm still flying today. And uh, I started doing that when I was about 20 years old. I started flying my comedy routine. and. The Super Cub that I fly today at the shows that do my drunk routine with, that is the exact airplane that I learned to fly in, I soloed in, and I started my air show flying career in. So okay. I, that airplane yeah. has a lot of history behind uh, with me and my father. And uh, so it's that one's really fun. And uh, then uh, also you know, flew the Waco Mystery Ship. A lot of people remember you yeah. know, that was one that was, my father was really famous for. And then we did... Uh, late 2000s we did uh, Pirated Skies which a lot of people remember with my late sure. wife Amanda we did Pirated Skies the wing walking routine with it and then uh, after that uh, I came out with a brand new airplane called Dracula. Dracula it's a one of a kind biplane that has uh, the world's first direct port fuel injected 985 it's the only one out there with this injection system on it's around four, or 515 horsepower and uh, the airplane itself was a combination of three different airplanes we took uh, the, a lot of design characteristics of a Waka UPF-7, a Pit Special, and a GB. Took the best thing of all three, built them into one airplane, and uh, now I got Dracula, which a lot of people see. And it's the goal was to have an airplane that had the look, sound, and appeal of the old barnstorming airplanes in the yeah. 1930s, but yet some of the handling and performance sure. characteristics of the modern day Pit's monoplanes. It's and not a huge airplane. No, it's if not. You look it, at it, it, you think it's big initially, but it, you look at it, it really looks. Yeah, quick I mean, and fast. it's it's bigger than a Pit Special, a yeah. little bigger than a model uh, Model 12 Pit's. But it's 20% smaller than a normal Waco, or you know, roughly it's about 30% smaller than a Stearman. So I mean, it's a it's a unique airplane. It's the only one of its kind. 
and it's got a lot of unique things on it and uh, you know with all this equipment I've got too it makes it really you know air shows is what I do I do air shows full-time for a living have for 21 years now and uh, you know, like I said, my family's been in it for 51 years. Last year was my uh, 20th year in the business. So I've been doing this a long time, and of course, the engine and everything, I rely on them a lot. I'm really hard on my engines. Like in my comedy routine, when you watch it, there's a lot of full power, back to, back to yeah, idle. Yeah. It's, got, it's got an 0320 in it that's been uh, hopped up, a high compression piston cylinder, all, all the different tricked out things on it to keep it light, but to also get more horsepower out of it. You know, Aircraft Specialty Service, they helped me when I started rebuilding it. And uh, we got it, got it all fixed up there. Well, I'm always so hard on my engine. At that time, when we rebuilt the engine, they were just finishing up the testing on cam guard. And I was like, all right, well, explain, you know, tell me about this stuff. Oh, it's you know, anti wear you know, yeah. protection and everything. And it probably worked really good with as much as I've used my engine. And so I started running it. And I tell you, the stuff is absolutely amazing. I now I run in everything from my lawnmower now to my cars, my airplanes. I run in everything because it makes such a huge difference in you know protecting my engine, especially during the winter when I'm in my off season and the engine just sits. Mm -hmm. It uh, you know it it I, I sent my filter off to have the guys see a split. I didn't have my didn't have a splitter with me. They cut it in the filter. And he's like, how many hours are on your engine now? I'm like I don't know, six seven hundred. And like, and how many hours were on this oil filter? Uh, 20, 20, 22, somewhere like this. Like, this is the cleanest oil filter I've ever seen. And I was like, I'm giving that to Camp Guard well, I was because gonna ask, stuff. I was going to ask uh, how many hours you put on your Waco engine but well, for your overall, because I know you're... You, you run it hard. Yeah, the, the one, even even the Waco and, and Dracula and everything. They they uh, I don't put as many hours on them because Dracula, when it was built, it was designed to be taken apart and trucked for show to show. It's okay. built strictly as an air show airplane to try to keep it light. So the fuel tanks in it are it only has limited amount of fuel for an actual yes. airship performance. So I uh, so I don't put a lot of hours on it, but every hour that goes on it is really hard and it's at max power. Like I didn't know this until a while back because my father taught me to fly. He told me the power settings. You know, you do the you know, 36 inch of manifold pressure at 2300 RPM. I'm like, okay, and that's what I set it at. And I was talking with Tulsa Aircraft Engine, and they were telling me like, well, what set of settings do you run it? And I told them, and they're like, for how long? I'm like, well, the whole performance. And they're like, you're not supposed to run those settings for more than three minutes at a time, period. And I'm like, well, it's what I've done forever, and that's what I do. So, and I talked to them about running Cam Guard, and they, 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 they at the time they hadn't heard of the product. I'm like, well, I'm gonna run it for a while, and then they generally tear down my engine every two years. Oh, sure. They wanted to tear down. They generally, they, they, they were amazed. The same guy that tore it down had put it together. Yep. He said it looks like the day I put it together. Mm -hmm. And I think at that time he had like a little over 200 hours on it. Yeah, it's probably a little less. It's a little less than that. But, okay. but but still, but again. What people don't get is also there is that's not takeoff and then cruise settings and everything. That is also all the way forward. It's like yesterday when I flew out here, you know, as, as soon as I get up there, it goes up. I'm actually at the engine turned up to 2400 RPM and uh, I'm running at max power the entire time. And by the time I landed yesterday, all my things were in the red, or almost in the red. I mean, my oil temperature, everything was right at redline because I'm pushing that thing so hard to get every, you know, every inch of power out of it. I can't. And again, that's what I love about Camguard is it makes such a huge difference in protecting my engine. And even I did, excuse me, I did uh, stunt driving. Uh, I've got a stunt driving thing I do from time to time. And uh, I've got stunt cars that I, you know, wrap the heck out of the engines on and always redline in them and everything. And uh, we actually just playing around. Uh, one of the guys at Camguard said, hey, try this for us. And I went out there and we did an oil change on one of the, one of the um, didn't put cam guard in yet. I started up and then started pouring the cam guard into it to see what happened while well, the car was idling. And as we started pouring in there, the RPMs went up and then the engine of had to reset everything and then they finally brought it back down because of all the, you know, the anti friction and everything. But the car stuff has got a lot more friction modifiers and stuff, obviously, than the aviation. But it's it's great stuff and I, I love it. And I stand by it. I get a lot of my friends that have now. I even have a friend across the street who's got an automotive shop and I let him try it, try it on some of his stuff. He's like, oh, I start selling this stuff. I really like this. So, you I mean, should. Yeah. Yeah. So, if, if people want to catch your app, can you go and have a website where yeah. you go to? Yeah. Yeah. I'll go to. I'm on the uh, website, franklinairshow.com. Uh, of course, on Facebook, uh, Franklin's Flying Circus on Facebook. Okay. Or you can even. My, my personal page is just the secondary business page now. And more, more people, I think, follow me on my personal page than anything else. Just Kyle Franklin. And uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram. Uh, I'm on 
Twitter, but I don't do much for Twitter. Yeah. But, uh... Well, it's so full of President Trump yeah. stuff. There's no room left. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, uh, I never liked Twitter from the beginning, but I'm on, it, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, and you can follow me on there. And, uh, you know, definitely anything there. And my schedule is, uh, I've got a schedule on Facebook page and on my website. Okay. And so, yeah, check us out and, you know, hopefully yeah, One last question. Yeah. Wasn't your dad, like, the first one to use music and choreograph a routine? Well, not necessarily the first one to use it. My, my father and I have always done unique things in the air show. So, like, last year, I was, I was in a magazine last year, and they called me the, the, the king of themed air show acts. Because, and I got that from my father. My father uh, did a routine in the 80s called Czar. Oh, yeah. It was a science science fiction character he flew a twin engine aero star yeah. and uh, it had a whole story it was a whole comic book thing with the air shows and when it first when he first tried it everybody was extremely negative like ah oh, this is stupid blah blah and it turned out to be one of the most popular acts that ever, yeah. that's ever been in the air show industry and of course I was about three four at the time and I grew up I grew up with that yeah. so that kind of instilled in me and then of course uh, did you know my comedy routine then I play the character Ben, ben Wabnoski I'm actually the second my father did that one too and uh, then, of course, with Pirate of Skies, playing pirates, and now I'm in Dracula doing vampire stuff. I like theme decks, they're just funny. I've always been a big movie guy and everything. So we do a lot of themed backstories. There's not a whole lot of, I don't know of any other performers, too many other performers out there that have ever done, you know, like a story that goes with their air show act. Yeah. So, you know, I'm always coming up. Just about everything I do in the air show business has a theme. And of course, I've always got more ideas. and. All I ever takes is time and money, you know? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I wish I could do half the ideas I have in my head, but, you know, I got to But that's what choose. brings the fun and the fantasy of yeah. the air shows. Well, it is. I mean, people, well, when your dad walked out of that air star in that black suit with the cape and the helmet, people didn't know what to think, but they expected, like, Bob Hoover would get out of his airplane right. and just stand there with his suit and tie on. Right. His dog. Right. Okay, but your dad gets out with the helmet and the cape, and he, he takes the show out of the airplane and takes it to the ground. Yeah, mean, well, that, and also, it was... A, also, that one was focused a little bit more on the kids, and this was at the hype of the, the Star Wars era, yeah. uh, with all Star with all Star Wars movie coming out in the early '80s. So it was, uh, you know, and it worked really well. And I kind of did the same thing with uh, Pirate in Skies because that was at the hype of all the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movies were coming out and all these things. And you know, who doesn't love a pirate? Everybody loves a pirate. So it, 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 and it works. It worked really well there. And uh, you know, just always trying to do something unique. Every every air show act I come up with, I gear towards, I view it as from a spectator's point of view. Mm -hmm. Like, what's popular in the pop culture? What do most people like? How can I gear my act up to the, the young, all the way to the old? You know, what, 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 I try to include something in my routine, in my acts that will appease to everybody, that appeal to everybody. You know, just that, so that everybody will have something in their life. They might not like one, one part, but they'll love another part. Yeah, you know, and that's the whole thing behind Dracula, is that it rolls almost 300 degrees per second, but it's still, and you know, pretty fast for a big biplane, but it has still has the round engine, lots of smoke, lots yeah. of noise. Yeah. So it has a little bit for all the different generations. And I had, even when Dracula first came out, I had kind of a story, I went along with it. And I wound up backing more off the story, because I, I, think, ah, I think we'll go more hardcore rock music and stuff like that. So, and it's one of the few acts out there that people, have, that I get tons of emails all the time, people wanting to know, like, what is your playlist when you fly Dracula? Because everybody loves the music, and they're like, I had a girl that was getting ready to run some decathlon, or she was getting ready to run, run something, and she needs some really upbeat mu music to energize her, and she wanted to know what my playlist list was on my Dracula routine. So I was like, all right, so I sent her that. And, so, you know, just try to find different things, and you try to engage the crowd. I mean, it's also like my comedy routine. Almost everybody's seen the video. The video, video's gone. Yeah. This video's been seen, I was calculating the other day, it's almost been over uh, 100 million views uh, worldwide on for my uh, comedy, uh, comedy act. And it's the one where, you know, the drunk comes out and he steals the airplane and, you know, drag the wingtips and everything. That's my comedy routine. And I still do, even in today's world, the, the drunk thing is kind of politically incorrect, but stealing the airplane and doing the drunk thing Anyone who's sitting in their lawn chair, just kind of watching the show and everything, whenever I come out, start haggling the announcer, and they get security out, and I take off running, they start chasing me, and I'm jumping the airplane, the announcer's getting excited, like, whoa, 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 stop, stop. You know, now everybody was just sitting in their chairs, just, you know, watching the show. Now they're up on their feet, their adrenaline's going, like, oh my God, what's happening? And that's my goal, is to engage the crowd more and get them to really enjoy, you know, get them thrilled. You know, they come to air shows to be thrilled, 
And so you want to thrill them. You don't want them to be just asleep all the sleep at the wheel and stuff, you know? Well, from what I've seen, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> People love it. Yeah, yeah. I said the comedy act's probably the one I'm most well known for because everybody's seen that one, and you know, even people that don't quite know me, I was like, oh, you ever seen the one where the drunk steals it? Oh, that's you! And I'm like, yeah, yeah. So well, I'm a big loud airplane <laughs> guy myself. Oh yeah, well that's the other thing, you know, and it, that's the cool thing about being here at Oshkosh too. And that, like I said, I flew the Kit Fox, I flew Dracula. Next year I'll bring the Cub back. I try to alternate between the mm -hmm. Cub and Dracula every year. But, you know, even on, I considered flying Dracula on Monday, too, and just putting the Kit Fox off to Sunday, but I had all kinds of people like, hey, you're flying that Kit Fox on Monday, right? Because we, we really want to see that thing, because it's just amazing to have this little 100 horsepower, you know, little uh, 100 horsepower Rotax engine on it, you know, it's a lawnmower engine on the front of it. They're going to hate me for saying that, but that's essentially what it is. I pull the cowling off, I'm like, you know, I do have, I have lawnmowers with bigger engines than on this thing, but it's such a nimble airplane, it's fun, it's a neat little airplane, and people don't expect to see the aerobatics I do in it, and there's no, it doesn't have an inverted system, doesn't have an inverted oil fuel or anything, the only modification from, or from the kit either you buy or you buy it from the factory is the smoke system. That's all. That's the only modification. Well, nothing runs like a deer, right? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it is green. Yeah. We're talking to Kyle Franklin, who's Mr. Theme Air Show King, <laughs> and uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing your act and be safe. No, Have fun you. and be safe. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank and thanks for using Canva. Oh, well, always, forever. <laughs>